This is our 154 class number four. Uh, we're basically going to look at different uh, modeling and organic techniques. So if we go to create shapes align, we'll use this tool and uh, we'll click the left mouse button one, two, three, four, and then the last time you click it, you want to click over the first. You get a prompt that says, do you want to close spline? And you say yes. So now we have a solid shape, if you will, called line. Now we can do different things with this. I'll show you how to do a compound shape. Um, so we do create. Now the line tool is just create the basic spline. Uh, the circle is basically a pre-made shape. Um, they usually call these parametrics. So I will draw out from roughly the center and create that shape. Actually, let me change the color real quick on the gray. Line was not very helpful. Okay, and actually let me get rid of the grid so you can kind of see what's going on. And let's make this a little lighter. Okay. So right now these are two separate objects. And if I look at the circle and I go to modify tab, you'll see the only thing I have is basically the radius that I can control. While with the line, it looks kind of like the edit poly modifier and the fact that we can select different elements and we have different changes we can make. But what we want to do is down below, um, you'll see an option for attach. And we want to go and you see the cursor changes when it sees other spline shapes and click it and now we have a solid shape. So we can do different things with the solid shape. Uh, when you are working with um, if you go through here, there is no extrude at all option for the line tool or what's called edit spline mode. This is default. So what you need to do is you have to actually add a modifier to it. So here's the extrude modifier. And you can see automatically if I do nothing, it creates a face, two-sided. And if I increase the amount, you can see it grows. The only drawback with this is that I can't do any scaling and I can only do one operation. So I'll delete this and I'll go back and I'll do the same thing, but this time choose bevel. And what I'll do is you'll see that there's a height. So that's like your standard extrude butts. There's also a scale. And then if you want to do again, you can do up to three times. And then let's do a fourth time. Let's do further. You gotta be careful because it'll start to ignore things with the geometry. So, but you can see that there's a lot of things, and there's all kind of controls here where you can make the whole thing curve if you want, um, etc. So, it's kind of pretty powerful option as far as what you can do with it. So, uh, that's something to obviously play around with, um, and that's the the bevel too. So, let's uh, do some other things with these shapes. So I'm going to create a circle again, draw out this circle, and then I'm going to draw out a second circle from the inside, and I'm going to make a gear. So uh, first thing I need to do is I want to do an array copy so that I can copy the little circle around the perimeter of the big circle. Now if I do anything right now, like rotate, you'll see it rotates in the center. I'm not getting any results. So in order to do this, I have to relocate what's called the pivot. Now there's another way to do it that we'll look at later, but currently I'll show you how to do it. So this is a circle, and you can see default circle, and we can't do any selection. But if we go to modify list and grab edit spline, which is right below edit poly, and then we can select the spline, this is actually a shape that's contained within the circle 002 object because remember we can attach multiple items or detach so if I move this over here you'll see that the cursor still is left in the center but the object is on the right now if I go out of that mode you'll see here's my center and if I go to rotate it automatically rotates around there so at this point I can pull up the array tool turn on preview and rotate on Z and you can see that now I'm starting to get and let's just increase the count let's decrease that to 24 okay that looks good 
And the first thing you want to be aware of is don't do instance. If you do that, basically they're all the same shape, and that creates problems. So make sure you change it to copy before you do anything else, or you won't be able to do the next operation. Hit OK. So now at this point, we're ready to combine all these elements. So we will take the, the um, well, we can take any of them. Uh, you can take a little circle or the big circle. The big thing we want to do is we want to do attach multi. And if everything was done right, you're going to get a list of all the other circles. So click the top one, hold down the shift key, collect all of them, do attach. And now they're all part of this single object. As you can see, if I go to move this around. So uh, the final step is to create a, a Boolean. And the way that we uh, do Boolean is it's uh, additive and subtractive. So first thing we want to do is we want to select the shape we want to do the operation to. So we want to keep the big circle and we want to subtract the other parts from it. So we activate Boolean. Now right now if we do add, what it'll do is it'll take two shapes and combine them. We want to subtract the one shape from the other. So now we do that and come through. You see that I can do this, or if I want to modify this a little bit, I could come in and I can do a Boolean and I could do every other one. This a subtract. Oh, it's slightly off. That's not going to work. Um, what I did want to show you real quick was you can also do the positives as well. And you'll see that creates a slightly different shape. So you can use either technique, add and subtract to get different results. And then once I'm done with that, turn off the boolean by going up here, and then come in and add the, uh, we'll just do extrude, uh, the extrude modifier. And you can see all of a sudden I have a kind of pretty neat shape that I created using some basic elements. So that's uh, that tool and that demo. The one thing um, we could look at, if you're just kind of curious how this is made, is when we're working with the actual shape, it's considered a spline. So it has like infinite resolution, you can zoom in, but the instant you make it into 3D, it converts it. And you can see it's converting into a mesh. Uh, mesh is another name for polygon. So this is actually a polygon object at this point, even though it doesn't see edit poly. So we could actually add an edit poly modifier at this point and do things and select actual elements and move them around, etc. So um, now that I have that, the one other thing I wanted to show you is just kind of how this is rendered. Now if I turn smoothing off and I zoom in, and actually the easiest way to show this is just to turn on edge face, you can see that it actually reticulated or took the curve and converted it to a bunch of straight line elements. If I turn on smoothing and turn off edge face, you can see that that's gone. So it's um, just something to be aware of. Uh, once again, you're creating the illusion of something that's smooth, but it, not, it isn't necessarily smooth itself. Okay, so we'll do a new object. And this one, I'm going to draw a shape in the side. And actually, I'll bring my grid back just to help me out for a second. Um, and I'm going to grab the, and I'm going to turn on snapping. And this hopefully will be uh, make sense in a moment. So I'm going to create a. Actually, let's do it once off, and then we'll do it once on. So create shapes line, and I'm just going to create some shape whatever I want. Now, if I click, now if I hold, I get a curve shape. So just it's going to look very strange. And if I click, I get another shape. Okay. And then let's just do this here, and then right mouse button and drop it. So this is a kind of a weird shape that I've created. So I'll come in now, and it's a line already, and I can edit it. And what I want to do is I don't want to extrude or do anything. I want to lathe it. And the result is this really funny looking thing. Now, in some programs, you can control where it's going <coughs> to uh, rotate. But here, it's minimum, center, and max, which basically is left, right, or center. So if I go minimum, that's actually starting to look more like what I intended. And if I do max, you can tell that that's not the shape as well. So minimum is the one we want to use, but it looks a little funny at this point. And the reason is, is because the normals are backwards. 
So if I flip the normals, now I get a solid object that looks kind of like a goblet. And you'll see I have two messy areas. I have this area that's messy and this area that's open. So what you need to do is when you actually create these objects, you want to make sure that you snap the top and the bottom together in order that they're overlapped properly. So uh, we can do this a couple ways. I can go back to this original, the original shape, and I can go in and if I uh, right-click snapping, I can say, okay, snap the grid points, which is what we want to do. So I'm going to select this one object and move it, and hopefully this will work. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to do it, but we can try anyway. Um, okay, so now we have both of those snapped. And now if we turn light back on and we take a look at the shape, we have a gap on both sides. So let's go back, center, min. Okay, so it recalculated it. Now if I do what's called weld core, it'll take the center items and you see how it disappears. So weld core is basically a way of taking all 16 vertices that are on top of each other and getting rid of them. And if for some reason it doesn't work, then you always have the option, because actually if we zoom in, you can see we didn't get it here. If I go in and add an edit poly modifier on top of this, and I do vertices, and I just border select those vertices, I can um, do a uh, weld. Um, and actually, let's do a target weld. Uh, merge. Sorry about that. Um, weld. Okay, there we go. I just had to increase it. Sorry about that. So that's what we had before. And then we'll take it till it pops. And voila, it's gone. Okay. And then we hit OK. And now that we have that gone, now those are all together and there's only a single point there. So that's just one technicality you want to make sure, because if not, you, you got to start to get some weird looking render options. Um, but that's kind of how you go about creating something like a cup. So that's uh, the classic wine glass demo. Okay, uh, let's uh, get rid of this. And let's get rid of the grid, and I'll show you another operation. So create shapes uh, rectangle. And in the top, actually, well, let's do it at the front. Front, I'll draw out my shape. And then create, and there's these pre-made shapes. Well, actually, there's shapes here, so let's just do the star just to play around. So I'm going to draw out the star and define what I want it to look like. And then I'm going to select the front and the actual rectangle. And I'm going to do Create, Compound, and Lot. And it'll say Get Path, which is the path, and then Get Shape, which is this form. So I want to click Get Shape. And I want to click it, and you'll see that what it did is it took that star shape and it ran it around that path. So some programs call this rail extrude. They call it often this program, which is actually an inaccurate name. But it'll give you kind of an idea of kind of what you can get. Now there's a semi, um, I guess, more fixed option of this that's called sweep. And you would just grab this shape and go find the sweep modifier, which is right here. And what this is, is it basically uses pre-made shapes. Um, this is handy if you want to do like steel work or those types of things. So you can see there's a wide flange. Um, so you can kind of play around with that. Um, you can do, you have a little bit more control over stuff you can do. And you can do custom shapes. But it's just basically a slightly different version of the same tool. Okay.